Hey folks, let's talk about assessing your Gemini moon. Now this video is designed to give you some tools to self-reflect for you to think about what your moon's needs are and how you stand in relationship to this part of your psyche. Now obviously our moon is colored by so many factors, conditioned by so many factors. Its sign, its house placement, its aspect, its phase, its declination. So your moon really is uniquely yours. It's no one else's. But today we're going to assess the moon by its sign, which is a basic but a good starting point. So we're going back to basics here, but with Gemini moon, you really want to have a look at that Mercury sign as that will be an important undertone of the moon's needs. So if we have a Gemini moon, but the uh, Mercury is in Scorpio, we're going to want to take or need to take that Scorpio subtone into account. So the moon in the natal chart uh, represents a few things. It is the inner prism through which we filter the external world, the inner beliefs, the subconscious beliefs that help us to filter our experience of life. The moon symbolically represents the conditions under which we find emotional or inner equilibrium. Uh, what we need to feel a sense of inner security and equilibrium. The natal chart will also show the ways in which that sense of equilibrium can be challenged or disrupted or undermined in some kind of way. Uh, the moon describes our central psychological need. It describes our baseline temperament or mood. It also describes this signature manner in which we respond and react to life. Two important words there, respond and react. How we emotionally process our life experience. The moon also symbolically represents our nurturing function, how we nurture other people. It also symbolically describes our subjective experience of childhood or the mother or the caregiver. So it's not saying that these are the objective qualities of the mother or the childhood experience, but it is the subjectively held internal um, feelings about our childhood or our growing up experience, our mothers or primary caregivers. Uh, it also is uh, somewhat more esoterically, the moon is the basin of our memory and it really is a repository of psychic data having to do with our unique and individual soul history. All right, so let's think about the Gemini moon as an inner prism. What sort of deeply held beliefs might someone with a Gemini moon have? Uh, they could say to themselves on a kind of, you know, subconscious level that life is to be explored as much as possible. An inner belief could be that variety is the spice of life. Be open to anything. So those are a few that we could work with in terms of uh, template beliefs. So it's not just that the person with a Gemini moon has these things as personal philosophies, like exposed personal philosophies. It's just that it's more that. Uh, his or her experience of life is subconsciously filtered through those kinds of lenses, the lenses of those beliefs. So life reflects these beliefs back to the Gemini person in the form of situations, uh, people, and events. How does the Gemini moon person find inner equilibrium? Now, I did a video on the astrological moon and how to work with it as your own personal remedy for healing sadness and depression so you might find that video useful so i'll link it on screen and at the end of the video um, but the gemini moon person finds inner equilibrium uh, by interacting with a variety of stimuli the Gemini moon person's sense of inner equilibrium is very tied to stimulation, to having a variety of experiences that stimulate the person mentally. Yeah. So inner equilibrium is found through mental engagement with a variety of experiences. So they're not content, Gemini moons, to sit by 
and let life pass them because they need to mentally explore and engage with the variety of experiences that life has to offer. So inner equilibrium is disturbed when there is a lack of stimulation, when there is a lack of uh, stimulating, uh, interesting experiences to interface with. Uh, so when those things are are lacking their moons are starved but Gemini moons uh, can in one sense fall into their own traps because their often scattered energy gets in the way of that inner need that inner sense of security I should say so what are the central psychological needs here of the Gemini moon the need to gather data the need for learning, the need for mental stimulation, the need for a variety of experience, the need for communication and language, the need to somehow communicate about their inner feelings and verbalize uh, their emotions and internal states in some kind of way, right? So how is the Gemini moon likely to react and respond? The Gemini moon person reacts quickly. They react with curiosity. They react with adaptability. They respond and react changeably. They use their mental faculties to meet life and to adapt to change. Yeah, They respond by making connections between ideas. They react by seeking information and data and they respond restlessly. That's that mutability. They respond restlessly as they move toward new experience. What is the baseline temperament here? The baseline temperament of the Gemini moon. Curious, eager to meet life, restless, mercurial, flexible, keen, exploratory, versatile communicative, cerebral, inconstant, kind of light too. So those are a few words to describe the baseline temperament of the Gemini moon. So how might the Gemini moon person nurture? What's their nurturing style? Uh, the Gemini moon person is going to nurture by encouraging verbal expression of feelings, by helping you perhaps to unpack your own emotions, by asking you the right questions, by encouraging you perhaps to lighten up, to not take things so seriously, by being childlike and playful. There is a, a kind of childlike playfulness of Geminis too that makes them uh, delightful uh, to be around in that respect. So they're going to encourage you to sort of lighten up too as a way of nurturing you. What about the uh, subjective experience of childhood? So uh, there could have been a changeable home environment being constantly on the move or let's say changing locations often. Uh, exposure to a lot of different experiences and environments. Uh, primary caregivers could have been inconstant, unreliable, or in some way unable to connect on deeper emotional levels, um, multiple households. These are just a few uh, suggestions, right? So if you have a Gemini moon, uh, think about and perhaps even journal about these questions. What does my Gemini moon suggest about my innermost filters of the world? How do I find emotional equilibrium? It's good to think about this and to notice yourself, to observe yourself and having a more conscious appreciation of your moon's needs goes a very far away, especially when you are living with a romantic partner or engaging uh, someone in a romantic capacity. So the moon will also give you kind of clues about how you need to approach domestic living for you to feel comfortable. So, you know, what kinds of things upset my emotional equilibrium and inner sense of security? Write it down, yeah? What are my central needs? Think about it, really think about it and write it down. What are my central needs? How do I react and respond? How do I nurture? What was my subjective experience of my childhood? So make a note of all of those things. 
and meditate on them. So it's meant to really be, folks, an exercise in in self-awareness, just notice and observe yourself without too much judgment. And I do this often myself when, if I'm feeling uh, off balance or anxious in some way, I tune in and check in. What does my what does my Capricorn uh, moon need that it's not getting at the moment? And the answer usually is a need to feel productive. So I go and I attack my to-do list and usually that helps me to find some balance. I organize my house in some kind of way. That helps a whole lot, right? So uh, the, the Gemini moon person, we should have said though, in terms of a uh, soul history, they could have a soul history that is bound up with a few themes. Uh, cultivating the mental faculties, the use of verbal skills and communication, being a messenger of sorts or some kind of communicator of ideas. But you can think about a few others. All right, folks, I hope this helped. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, make sure to write your responses down. Uh, until next time, folks, talk soon. Bye.